some special dignitaries on our show like we had professor ms shetty last week uh today we have very very interesting subject for all of you uh, because we will be speaking about two authors of a book of a very important book for yes. all of you uh, very because recently thinking about very recently of a book of a very and uh, uh, in this uh, this special book is about a uh, bridge management system a very deep topic but if you'll read the book it is written in a wonderful friendly way in a story format which had been our speciality as well isn't it explaining about concrete technology through story format so i have just given a link of that book here in case any of you want to buy it you can just click this link and go on amazon and you can buy a kindle copy if you want ebook immediately downloaded and you can start reading it or you can order a hard book version of it so uh, i am very pleased to welcome our two dignitaries here uh, sachinarand joshi sir and vaibhav dange sir so these two are the authors they are here with me in the studio and before i ask them to join i just wanted to introduce them to you so that you know to whom you are going to welcome right so let me begin with uh, sachidanand joshi sir so he is a very familiar name in the international uh, bridge management uh, fraternity he is a staunch advocate of first repair worst defect remember ha huh, this civil engineering phase first repair worst defect we'll speak to him about it what does he exactly mean when he says that and uh, prevention of distress in management of engineering structures his four decades of professional experience and passion for research led to the evolution of indian bridge management system so we call it ibms and we'll be speaking about this ibms in detail as we go ahead to date he continues his research to integrate multi dimensional technologies with ibms and now a revised version ubms we'll be speaking about it on this platforms many of his technical papers articles documents have been presented at international and national conferences and seminars so that is about sachidanand joshi sir now about uh, the second author of this book Uh, vaibhav dange sir with an mba degree under his belt he devoted his knowledge in management to implementing process in ensuring speedy redressal of issues in all spheres of activities from 2014 to 2019 for 5 years he was the private secretary to the honorable minister of road transport and highways nitin gadkari ji and was very closely associated with all developmental works related to national highways friends we have seen how our scenario of national highways has been transformed with nitin gadkari ji being the minister during this tenure he got involved in the ibms project and his deep knowledge and insight resulted in many innovations within the ibms he is associated with various infrastructure projects undertaken by national highways authority of india all us engineers we are very familiar with nhi right so he is the prime force there who is driving many of these projects he actively publishes his experiences so let me welcome both of them now in our studio and uh, here they are uh, joshi sir and dange sir thank you very much sir for joining us here today and uh, all our audience is eager to hear about you uh, i wanted to begin uh, with uh, sachidan joshi sir about uh, this uh, bridge management system uh, although it is such a important concept all over the world but in our country we civil engineers including me myself we are not familiar with it at all so can you please as we begin the discussion can you start speak king about a bms bridge management system yes joshi sir
sir your microphone you'll have to unmute okay uh, thank you mukun yes, joshi and yes, uh, welcome to all of you to start with if you are starting the discussion on bridge management it would be of interest to your audience to understand what bridge management is <coughs> most of the people tend to be an inventory of bridges but the real bridge management is not just the inventory of bridge bridges in the on the network but it also includes data about the status of the bridges that is collected via inspection process and testing process both these processes together lead to the updated status of the bridge on the network there could be thousands of bridges like on the national highway the total data that we collected was 172000 uh, structures of which nearly 38000 were bridges and the rest were culverts so when you are dealing with one particular stretch of highway there could be many bridges on that highway and the status of all these bridges define the connectivity that that highway accords from point a to point b even if one bridge is damaged or in distress it can lead to delays on the highway now bridge management deals with the actual management of bridges to ensure that the damage is controlled or rectified timely with proper funds the concept of bridge management got evolved when people started collecting inventory and status data about the bridges they realized that 30 40% of their bridges were in distress and to re rectify these distress you require a lot of funds the fund availability even in a developed country like america or european nations or australia new zealand or singapore the the funds availability is always in shortage and there in comes the, the therein lies the birth of bridge management now bridge management actually deals with prioritizing the bridges as per their distress to ensure that they get sufficient funds for their repairs the process or the decision making to arrive at this priority list is the key of bridge management the data that is collected is the initial or the primary step that helps you achieve that priority that helps you achieve the deterioration modeling because when you have data of the same bridge over many years say 10 10 cycles or 15 cycles you can easily develop the deterioration model that can happen on that bridge so this helps you in forecasting the distress and it helps you in forecasting the probability of this bridge coming under repair at a later date so this entire process of prioritizing and budget allocation or budget forecasting is a essential ingredient of bridge management both these functions are possible only when you have sufficient knowledge about the inventory and the status of the bridge so the whole package comes to you as a bridge management system in india till about 5 or 6 years ago we had status we had collected i think five or six times the status of the bridges on national highway but all those reports were restricted to individual bridges and were in hard copies so when you are required to analyze the status of the bridges in totality all 40000 bridges or 172000 bridges you were at a loss you required computer for that you required the data to be digitized and it was uh, honorable minister nitin gadkari who insisted 
that we needed a digitized system, a fully digitized system. IBMS in its initial phases had inventory that was digitized. Subsequently, when we upgraded that to UBMS or Unified Bridge Management System, we have the entire uh, process digitized. So if tomorrow the ministry decides to apply UBMS through data collection, you don't require an officer to decide which is the bridge that requires to be repaired first. That, that result will be available online, automated, directly from the system. So this whole package is actually the bridge management system. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, for this nice introduction to this important subject. Friends, I have read this book and friends, let me tell you a uh, complicated subject, uh, not easy, you know, for us to understand, even though we are civil engineers, but the whole book is, result, is written in a story format. Once you start reading that book, I assure you, you will not keep it down till you finish it. There is a link. Please get the book. Now, uh, when uh, sir said that, uh, you know, when they began this project, I have read this book and I'm uh, speaking after reading this book, right? So when they began, the data was simply not there. How many bridges are there on national highway? Imagine going to every corner of the country and mapping these details, getting the geographical location, not only getting the location, but inspecting that bridge, analyzing the state. I'm sure sir will speak about it, but I want to go to our other author today. Uh, Vaibhav, sir. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask you how, what motivated you to write this book and the whole process of writing this book. Can you please shed some light on that? Vaibhav, sir. Thank you, Mukunji. Thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, good evening to all uh, our audience. Uh, uh, Mukunji, I am not a civil engineer. So I am... I got involved in this uh, Indian bridge management system as part of the administrative setup in the ministry. But uh, the whole uh, journey was so, so uh, you know, exciting and learning for me personally. Uh, you know, uh, so we thought uh, we must share that journey uh, of what are the challenges, what we need to do uh, to, you know, overcome those challenges. For example, as you rightly said, uh, you know, I'll I'll share an incident. We when we, we we had one proposal come to us, and as I as a private secretary to the minister, I was supposed to take that proposal to the minister for approval. And that proposal was uh, uh, doing the conditional survey of various bridges and structures on uh, national highway. And the proposal was a bit costly, so minister said it doesn't look uh, you know convincing that we need to spend almost uh, ranging from 15, 20 crores to 30, 30, 35 crores in each state for just doing the survey of conditional survey of our bridges. So he said, why don't you, you know, study it better and uh, try to know why the cost is so high and things like that. So, you know, uh, I inquired uh, with our team in the ministry, the bridge engineers and chief engineer bridges and, you know, and the whole discussion continued for, for a few months. And, uh, uh, as I was diving deep, we came to know that we don't know how many bridges are there on our national highways. We didn't know how many structures are there on our national highways. So we don't know how we are maintaining our structures. What is the status of our structures? Uh, you know, how many major bridges, how many, you know, minor bridges. And we have been experiencing accidents like Savitri Bridge accidents in, Mah accident in Maharashtra or the Manganga uh, uh, Bridge accident. And there is a huge loss of, uh, you know, human lives uh, in those accidents. And so we thought we need to bring in some mechanism through which we are better prepared, better aware, and our infrastructure is better maintained for the users. And that's how this whole story of, uh, you know, bringing this Indian bridge management system came in. That's how uh, Mr. Joshi helped us in, in organizing all this uh, Indian bridge management system. So this whole journey was so, uh, was so exciting. So post, uh, you know, completion of this uh, Indian bridge management system, Sachiran Joshi ji and I was thinking that we must share that journey with others. And while doing that, we will try to uh, share the journey in a very, uh, you know, uh, 
uh, exciting form to the people in the in the story form so that people will like to read it uh, people will uh, you know as a bridge management and bridge is a bit a dry subject uh, uh, so let's convey it to the people in a very informative and a very simple uh, narrative so that people uh, you know understand the journey and our objective of sharing this journey with, with the people so that the, the new engineers new officers you know management students uh, uh, new, uh, you know, uh, uh, students of the uh, uh, administrative processes, they should, you know, look at this journey and try to learn and also give that confidence to them that if we all put together right uh, perspective and right frame of mind, we can find out a lot of solutions to challenges we have. And our objective is to, uh, all of us probably, everybody will agree to me, all engineers, our objective is to create an infrastructure which is sustainable, create an infrastructure which is, you know, user friendly, create an infrastructure which is long lasting, create an infrastructure which is, which is very, uh, you know, uh, useful to the people of uh, the, the country. And that was our objective to share this uh, entire story to the people. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot for your detailed answer. Uh, friends, when you will go through the book, uh, friends, I can't resist sharing in between the authors, you know, because I'm so excited after reading the book. When you will read the book, friends, uh, you will understand that getting a, such an important concept, bridge management system, uh, everybody would give 100 out of 100 marks, but still implementing it through the ministry at the whole national level, it is a like carrying big Shiva Dhanusha. It is not easy. And that journey is beautifully given in the book. So this book has two sides. On one side, it is a technical book written for all engineers like us about bridge management system. On the other side, this book is about the passion, about getting the things done, about following a dream and making it a reality. And I want all of you to read this book, how we, uh, somebody like Sachidananda Joshi ji or Vaibhav Dange, sir, how they get possessed by a certain idea and how it is implemented in spite of number of challenges. Okay, enough of my gyan. I want to go back to Sachidananda Joshi sir and ask him about his story, why he got interested in uh, bridge management system. Please, sir, can you shed some light on that? Mukunji, uh, since you have read the book, I, I presume that you know about the bridge collapses that occurred and the loss of human life. Vaibhoji also mentioned about it, Damanganga Bridge and Savitri Bridge. Now, these two collapses are the point where things changed for bridge management in India. When Damanganga Bridge collapsed, before Damanganga Bridge collapsed, I had shown some interest in disaster management and distress management. We were doing small structures, factory buildings, commercial structures, industrial structures, jetties for naval, naval dockyard. And when Damanganga Bridge collapsed, I was present there on that fateful day. And I saw with horror in my heart the loss of human life that occurred on Damanganga Bridge. 26 children, small children in the age group below 12 or 13 died due to the collapse of that bridge. And that really instigated the passion in me. And I started reflecting on my earlier studies and I said, Oh God, why did we not do something about such bridges? Why have we not studied more in detail about the bridges and how it leads to a disaster? Can't a civil engineer stop the disaster? That was the question that drove me into the research mode. And for a small consultancy firm to embark on the research was unthinkable. And yet the passion or the urge to find a solution was so strong, was so severe that I 
virtually gave up all commercial activity and devoted myself to the study of distress in bridges one thing led to another surprisingly there were a few good clients who supported our entire journey not as in the research mode but because we were known in the industry to be people who would work on distress identification and distress mitigation we were given quite a number of bridges even in daman itself daman ganga bridge after it collapsed the then chief engineer i always tell him sir unknowingly you have given birth to this process because not known to him we were researching and he wanted to find out the status of all the bridges in daman daman area daman had at that time i think seven bridges and he gave he floated a tender for those all those seven bridges i was located in daman so it was easier for me to grab that order and we under undercoated because we wanted the job to enable us to study better to take one step forward in our research one study led to another then uh, under nitin gadkari honorable minister nitin gadkari when he was the pwd minister he started the project of mumbai pune expressway and on mumbai pune expressway there is one bridge called pune valley viaduct immediately after casting the uh, deck slab and coating it with an overlay it was seen to undergo lot of cracking and i remember bongirwar saab was the then um, he was at that time uh, involved in msrdc as i think chief engineer or a post higher than that he approached me and said sachin can you do the scanning of that kune valley viaduct and i readily agreed we use kune valley viaduct take one step forward and identification of or correlating the status and the testing protocols and that led to one step forward on the bridge management similarly mumbai municipal corporation wanted to do an inventory of all the bridges in mumbai municipal corporation area they had about 180 or odd bridges and the first order was given to us to do the inventory that consolidated the inventory procedures of ibms so directly or indirectly all the clients that were awarding us work were contributing to the process of research and consolidating of the bridge management system so that is how the whole research happened whenever the client ordered us to do an audit the client would get much more than the audit because he would get the inventory of the bridges he would get the status of the bridges he would get the testing even if it is not required and then we would come out with ratings for deck ratings for uh, superstructure substructure and then uh, economic ratings socio economic ratings and all those things that were that are a part of ibms so this is how the whole process happened and it took nearly 15 20 years 15 years for us to complete the research as fate would have been one of my friend lost his father and it was at the funeral i met another friend of his from nagpur and he told me that he is working for a organization which deals with new technologies so he requested me to come and make a presentation at his uh, office and that is how i went to nagpur to make a presentation at his office when we were making the presentation the one of the audience asked us ki is it recognized by the industry is it recognized by the federations is it recognized by the institutions civil engineering institutions and all those institutions that made me think why not get all the associations like issc iibe ici uh, maharashtra chamber uh, maharashtra chapter aci institute of engineers indian road congress 
why don't we get them all together and organize a one day workshop or a round table conference on bridge management we called everybody fortunately each of the organization was represented at the highest level and everybody attended and listened very patiently to that uh, round table conference i remember madhav bhide the late madhav bhide who was then the uh, chairperson for iibe he attended and he took the initiative in drafting the communique that was supposed to be handed over to the minister of road transport and highways and this led uh, this a uh, round table resulted in my going to delhi subsequently and that is how i got introduced to late vinayak patankar who was the dg at uh, morth and he insisted that i make a presentation to the minister at a appropriate time i think vaibhav ji will tell you all the details about how uh, he did the Uh, research for ibms or bridge management within the ministry and how the whole process happened but yes. the research as i said was assisted and unknowingly helped by all our clients who awarded us the work of bridge inspection thank you sir thank you very much i just <laughs> want to go now straight away to vaibhav sir sir can you just shed some light on this decision making process within the ministry and uh, how it got resulted after the decision was made how it got implemented the ibms uh, as sachidanand ji was telling us uh, you know uh, we were looking at some solutions to uh, for a better bridge management in terms of uh, we we didn't knew how many bridges we had on our highways so minister was keen that we create some mechanism we found out that their ministry is regularly doing these surveys after every 4 5 years and we have that huge you know paperbacks coming of this survey and that's that's uh, uh, as as we say it's it's all kabad uh, going to some store room and not used by anybody so we wanted modern technology to be used modern uh, you know digital platforms to be used so that that data which we use see the whole purpose of uh, you know getting this data is to analyze that data use that data for decision making and that is what exactly was lacking so we thought that let's create this mechanism uh, as sachidanand ji was telling mr patan ko who was director general of roads uh, uh, at that time was a very positive forthcoming engineer he being the engineer himself and he was very forthcoming positive uh, proposing what can be done how do we take it forward and then this whole discussion process started see in government uh, uh, there is always a uh, kind of a, a favoritism for status quo nobody wants to do uh, you know chart a new path nobody wants to you know uh, do something which has not been done earlier and and similar challenges has been faced right from why do we need bridge management to how do we do bridge management so how do we engage the agency how do we draft the tender how do we define what is the role of the agency right from you know drafting the tfrs to to the you know everything but fortunately uh, as they say uh, if the vision is clear and the top leadership of the uh, any institution is keen to bring in those changes and 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 puts its weight behind those decision making process then then everything is possible and though it took us for almost 3 years but it's a long process of discussions deliberations uh, maneuvering in terms of managing the egos rubbing the wrong edges you know everything that is required in human coordinations uh, the ibms has experienced that and i'm sure uh, uh, we have tried to uh, to to show that journey in the book as much as possible without hurting anybody but uh, the whole idea is not to uh, you know project who was right or wrong or who did right or wrong but idea is to kind of present the whole journey 
what are the challenges and how do we overcome those challenges and i think uh, we all uh, not we me or sachinanji or uh, or anybody but anybody who could have gone through that process could have probably done similar things and that's why that was the whole idea of sharing those journeys with everybody yes sir thank you very much uh, sir just now taking this discussion ahead i want to ask uh, sachidanand sir sir what is the current status of ibms what is happening now with it as far as the current status of ibms is concerned in the ministry they have frozen the data for 172000 structures and analysis of the data is an ongoing process uh they are looking at enhancing or consolidating ibms into a more stronger rigid and a versatile platform for that the rfq is floated and probably tenders for the same will be floated in a couple of months that is related to the ministry as regards to our research on ibms as i mentioned earlier we have now digitized the whole process and the entire process can happen without human interference because that was the vision of the minister he in one of the discussions when vaibhavji missed out on one point when the decision making happened it was a proactiveness of the minister that enabled us to implement ibms without that proactiveness and zeal that he had his passion and our passion really synchronized with each other because he was keen to prevent or reduce the loss of human life on highways and our whole purpose of doing the research was to prevent loss of human life on bridges due to bridge collapse so that was a proactive uh, governance that happened that enabled us to reach that level when we were implementing ibms in the ministry he would want briefing from the team on regular basis once in 3 months once in 4 months or sometimes even every month and it was in one of those meeting he brought out his vision for what ibms should be like in future and the first thing that he mentioned was instead of digitizing only the inventory why don't we have a entire system that is 100% digitized why can't we have a system that is free of human interference why do we require decision making to delay the process because what happens is once you have identified a distress if it is to be attended it has to be attended immediately if even if there is a delay in decision making as to which bridge to adopt which bridge to take for rehabilitation you may end up in a very flash flood situation due to monsoon approaching or due to mon uh, severe weather and you will probably end up with the bridge getting washed off like what happened in savitri uh, bridge now savitri bridge when it collapsed we had completed completed the software for the system but were not implementing it savitri bridge collapse instigated the implementation on immediate basis so daman ganga bridge collapse initiated the research savitri bridge collapse instigated immediate action of implementing ibms now this whole process was so tenaciously followed by the minister that he would suggest why don't we have this technology incorporated i was surprised even before drone were known in the indian skies gadkari ji mentioned about it in one of our meeting why don't we have drones to inspect the bridges why can't we have robotics doing the test 
Now, all these technologies are to be incorporated in UBMS, and that is our next research level. In fact, on the international level, there is a committee being set up under IABSC, which is dealing with how to integrate bridge management with bridge information model. Bridge management per se does not have any modeling, does not have any picture of where the distress is. So on the international level also, there is a committee set up. I happen to be a member of that committee, an invited member. And we are working on the modalities to integrate BIM with BMS or BMS with BIM, whichever way it works easier. So that requires drone to do the inspection of the bridges. So imagine civil engineering authorities are looking at it today. And seven years ago, the minister had mentioned to us during one of the briefing, why don't you use this technology? Similarly, he was talking about nanotechnology. He was talking about uh, uh, robotics for testing. And he was talking about a whole range of uh, 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 technologies. He wanted the colleges to do the research on these technologies. And we need to adopt those research into IBMS. So our path forward has been defined by the minister himself. And we are working on it. Fortunately, we have the wherewithal now to do those research and we are slowly inching to a situation. The last chapter of the book, uh, our book, Building Bridges, Shaping the Future, talks about this vision of the minister and elaborately explains what will be the scenario of IBMS in 2040. So this whole journey from 2015 to 2040 has been driven by the synergy between two passions. That is where IBMS is today. Thank you very much, sir, for your detailed answer. And sir, as I read the book, I could feel the passion of Nitin Gadkari, sir, at every page and uh, how he was he put his entire force in getting it done. Sir, as we go towards the close, I want to ask a final question to Vaibhav Dange, sir. Sir, do you see uh, other states, other bodies implementing this IBMS at their level? No, no definitely. Uh, you know, there is a challenge in the government. As I said earlier, nobody wants to experiment in the government. Nobody wants to, you know, uh, proactively do things in the government. Everybody prefers to be, uh, to, to maintain the status quo. And therefore, I think a, a, a a time has come that uh, 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 you know right-minded people uh, in in our country, like for example, Sachin Anandji passionately followed it up with. Uh, I remember uh, for uh, when I met him for the first time, and till the time we implemented IBMS, he was equal. Even today, he's equally passionate about how do we take it forward. So I think those who who feel uh, that we want to do something and believe in doing some some something right will have to take it upon themselves to educate people to to motivate people to look at those solutions and without uh, you know uh, uh, getting uh, frustrated by the by the challenges by the by the typical no's from the government agencies I think our experience has been wherever I have been talking to the state government, to the public works department in the states, they have been very forthcoming, very positive. You know, saving the human life is something which nobody will uh, will like to compromise on. So therefore, uh, uh, you know, with these kind of methods, uh, we can definitely, I'm, I'm sure all states will take the initiative. For example, the platform is ready with the ministry and the same platform can be used by the state government. They can do their own. Uh, you know, surveys, add on those data and uh, we could be the world's biggest database of structures. And and we can go on uh, adding various features, improving the uh, analytic, analytics part of it, uh, uh, use some AI so that uh, we know beforehand which are our bridges. Uh, you know, today our technologies are available where we can put in permanent sensors to these bridges, where any variation in the, you know, uh, 
uh, load could be detected any damage to the bridge can be detected and immediate measures can be taken so probably upcomment of our infrastructure 25 30 years back we were quite lagging on our infrastructure today our infrastructure is globally competitive so now maintaining our infrastructure is very very important and i think uh, everybody understands this and will have to understand it today or tomorrow for example these days we go to europe or us and airports that are built 35 years back or 40 years back today are are crumbling highways built you know 30 years back are crumbling railways built 25 30 years back are crumbling so we have advantage of being young infrastructure but then we also have equal responsibility of ensuring those infrastructure as maintained well so that our you know uh, we as a country are are always better placed in our infrastructure yes sir uh, yes sir thank you very much for again uh, your detailed reply and uh, uh, friends i just want to conclude at this point uh, before i thank our guests just i want to tell you one thing before ibms began which means before 2014 we were not aware how many bridges are there on national highways we were not aware today we know that more than 162000 bridges have been mapped and they are being monitored and they are being repaired i think what more can you ask uh, from a person sachidanand joshi ji which began with a small thought which began with a passion so friends we need to have passion we need to work on that passion and we need to get it implemented and then something as big as this happens when then only somebody as big as nitin gadkari sir contributes to making that passion a reality all of you please read the book it's a very motivational story from engineering point of view and from passion to reality from that aspect as well so both the sirs thank you so much for being here uh, with our audience they all love they are all civil engineers and they love this kind of interaction and vaibhav dange sir sachidanand joshi sir thank you very much for being here and uh, sir we wish you uh, a bright uh, few day next few years for ibms and ubms to get reality thank you very much sir. thank you thank, thank you, you so much thank you pleasure